So I think one of the biggest, most missed problems in engineering design for curtain walls and storefront is building structural movement. This is getting passed over and it's creating issues with uh, building systems, uh, curtain wall and storefront that actually leak at the building movement joint. It's the responsibility in the delegated design criteria that's usually spelled out in the specifications. I have an example that we're going to use and we can see that right now in this area that three quarters of an inch is called out as the building structural movement that's required in between columns. That's the beam that is actually moving up and down that's holding or interfacing the curtain wall system or the storefront and that building structural movement needs to be accommodated in that building movement joint. So this is what a building movement joint would look like in the middle of curtain wall. So it's not a problem if it's occurring in the middle of the curtain wall. That building can move up and down, that beam can move up and down, and we can accommodate that movement in slots that's through the connection. But if it happens to occur at the head of the curtain wall, it's called a building movement joint and it usually consists of a weather seal and the standard dimension for that that's called out by manufacturers is about a half an inch. And so what that means is that half inch needs to be designed for whatever that building structural movement is in the center of the beam deflections for live load movement. And a typical requirement for that structural or for that sealant weather sealant joint is about uh, 50 percent compressibility or 50 percent elastic stretchability and so that means that it needs to be designed for two times the amount of movement. In this case that we just looked at through the specs it was three quarters of an inch that was the structural movement and we can see that doubling that requires at minimum a one and a half inch uh, movement building movement joint. Here's some of the areas to look for in your structural engineering calculations that you're getting done on the glazing systems. We can see in this case that building structural movement is accounted for and also the thermal expansion of the system itself. If this is not being done by your current engineer you need to get this done and checked because this is one of the most important areas in the design of facade systems. This is a criteria that shows that standards, codes, and manufacturers requirements for this joint material all specify that there's a requirement to design this type of a joint for the actual movement. And typically it looks like this. Two times the movement plus the thermal is about the minimum requirement for the joint thickness that it needs to be to accommodate that movement. Glazing contractors, architects, and general contractors be very careful of this next part that I'm about to describe. Sometimes there appears on drawings, shop drawings, boilerplates of what the manufacturer has allowed for building structural movement. It might look like this. You can see in this case that the manufacturer has described a total building and thermal movement allowance of a quarter of an inch. If you take the thermal off of there, you might have building movement accommodation of maybe an eighth of an inch or maybe three sixteenths of an inch. This is never, hardly ever the case for building structural systems. And if you miss this part and you sign off on this document, the manufacturer or whoever's putting this document together is counting on your approval of that item. They intend for you to check to make sure that the building structural movement and the thermal added together do not exceed this amount. This rarely ever gets checked and this is wrong. At JEI we always check it. It's our primary duty in design, a delegated design of curtain wall and storefront integrating our system, which is a very rigid system, into a very flexible structural system is the most important part of the design process. It's the handshake that needs to occur between the AE design group 
and the cladding engineer.